one, in this video I'll be explaining you the step-by-step -step process which is required to be followed in order to install Hadoop in your system. Now Hadoop is a framework used for big data and it is used for processing large-scale data across a cluster of computers. Now in order to install Hadoop you must first install Java in your system and you need to install the right version of Java which is JDK 8.0 for running Hadoop. Uh, the reason why JDK 8.0 is installed is because it will help uh, you to run Hadoop program without any problems because it's much more compatible and Hadoop is initially built using Java so it's important to understand uh, the importance of installing Java in your system. Okay, so go to the official website of Oracle, download the current version of Java which will be compatible with Hadoop which is Java JDK 8.0 and then install it in your C drive and once you have installed it in your C drive um, try to include or add the path of the JDK file which you have installed in your system environment variables and once you have added it successfully you are good to go okay go to your command prompt check for the Java version if it's working or not and if Java runs in your command prompt, then that means you've successfully installed Java, okay? I'll be explaining you step by step in this video. Try to follow along and do implement all of these steps um, in order so that you will be able to get the same result which I got, okay? Once you've installed Java, the next step is to install Hadoop and you will be able to do that by going to the official website of Apache and you can download the binary version of Hadoop and then after that you can install Hadoop or extract the installation file in your C drive and once you have extracted the Hadoop file you have to go to the etc folder of Hadoop and then modify some files okay and once you modify that files then you need to include the path of the Hadoop bin folder um, in the system environment variables okay so once you have included the path for Hadoop, you can successfully start running your first Hadoop program and then you will be able to um, execute it and you will be able to also run MapReduce programs, okay? There are different components of Hadoop ecosystem, but three, mainly there are three components, all right? Which is HDFS, which is Hadoop Distributed File System. We have MapReduce, uh, which is the processing unit of Hadoop and as well as we have Yarn which is the resource manager which is yet another resource negotiator, Yarn. So these are the three components, HDFS, MapReduce and Yarn. You need to understand um, Hadoop is helping you to store, process and analyze large scale of data by distributing it across a cluster of uh, computers or commodity hardware, right? And so let me go ahead and show you the step-by-step -step process so that you can follow this and install Hadoop in your system, okay? So after installation of Hadoop, you also need to install uh, the virtual machine, okay, to run Hadoop. And so the virtual machine, you can install any virtual machine. It's ideal to install VMware uh, Workstation 17 as of right now, or you can install Sandbox, okay? Um, VM Sandbox or any other virtual machine but so that you can run Hadoop. After installation of the virtual machine you also need to install the operating system. So here we are installing Cloudera. Okay, I'll also talk about how to install Cloudera um, so that you can completely you know, install all the necessary software and run your virtual machine and execute the code in the virtual machine which is super important. So stick around till the end. It's going to be a long video but it will be helpful because you will be successfully running your first Hadoop program which is WordCon program. So I'm super excited to do this. So let's get started. Hello everyone, my name is Ram Paul. I'm a first year MTech computer science learning student here at Christ University King Gary campus. And today in this video, I will be explaining you the step-by-step -step process required to be followed in order to install Hadoop in your system. Now, Hadoop is the framework for big data, and it was originally introduced in the year 2006, okay? And right now, Hadoop 
is used for big data analytics because it is the most important framework. And it has three components. We have the HDFS, Hadoop Distributed File System, we have the MapReduce, as well as Yarn, okay? Yet another resource negotiator. Now, in this video, I will be explaining you the step-by-step -step process which you need to follow in order to successfully install Hadoop in your system. So let's dive in and jump right into it. So first and foremost, what you need to understand is Hadoop was primarily built using Java programming language, and so if you don't have Java installed in your system, you'll not be able to run Hadoop, okay? So first and foremost, you need to check if Java is installed in your system or not. So for that, what you need to do is go to the search bar, type cmd, okay, command prompt, open up your command prompt, and right-click on it and run as administrator. Click on yes, and now you have the command prompt. What you have to do is type in Java hyphen hyphen version. Press enter. Now it says Java is not recognized as an internal or external command, operable program or batch file, which means Java is not yet installed in your system because the system is not able to recognize Java. Okay, so what you need to do is you need to close this command prompt since Java is not installed. And you have to install the right version of Java, which will support Hadoop. So what you need to do is you have to go to your favorite web browser. But before that, you need to make sure that you are connected to the internet. So let me go ahead and connect to the internet. Okay, so I've connected to the Wi-Fi. Now let me go ahead and select my favorite web browser. So let's click. Let me go ahead and choose Google Chrome. Now, once I'm in Google Chrome, what I need to do is I need to install Java, okay? So let me go to the search bar and let me type in Java Oracle, okay? Press enter. Now, the first link, you just have to click on it. Now, once you clicked on it, you will have this web page. Now, what you need to do is head over to the top right corner and you will find the download Java button, okay? You just have to click on it. And once you click on it, so you might be tempted to download Java 21 and Java 17 or versions such as 21 or 17, but you should not download these versions, okay? Because Hadoop was primarily built or developed using Java programming language and the JDK which is supported by Hadoop will be different. Okay, these are the latest editions of Java, but you should you shouldn't download these editions. Instead you have to scroll down, okay? You have Java 8 here, okay? And Java SE development kit A2391. What you need to do is you need to download this Java JDK version because this is the one which supports Hadoop. Okay, so choose your operating system. I'm choosing Windows because I'm using Windows operating system and choose uh, the 64-bit version, okay, ADK 8U391 Windows X64. Okay, click on it and you need to first and foremost accept the conditions, okay, agreements. So you just have to check boxes and then download this particular version. When you click on download, you need to have an Oracle account, folks, in order to download this, all right? Uh, if you don't have an Oracle account, you need to create one. Uh, so you will have this installation file, which is popping up, okay? So let me go ahead and uh, put this exe file, executable, in my desktop and click on Save. Now, in the Downloads folder, it will be, you know, downloading. Okay, it's downloaded successfully. That's good. So let me go to my um, desktop and here you have this file, okay? Now I need to install this file in my C drive, okay? Because you need to find out whether you have enough space in a C drive or not because if you don't have any space, you'll not be able to install it. And so kindly ensure that you have at least 50 gigabytes of space free in your C drive, okay? Now here is a location where we are going to install Java. So let me go ahead and click on Windows C, okay? Now there is no Java already installed in the system, 
So we need to first and foremost create a Java file here, an empty folder. Okay. So let me go ahead and right click on it and click on new, click on folder, and let me give the name Java and let this be here in the C drive. Okay. Nothing is there here, but we are going to install Java here. So now let me go ahead and click on this installation file, which we have just downloaded. Okay. Now, once you have clicked on it, it will ask for the permission whether to allow this app or not, and click on yes. Now, you need to install only this version of Java, okay? Don't install any other version, because if you're installing other version, it's not going to work. Now, once this setup or this dialog box opens up, what you need to do here is it shows that this will guide you through the installation process. Click on Next. Now, you just have to leave this path installed to as it is and click on Next. And now it's, you know, installing Java in the system, but still not over, okay? Um, you need to wait for some time until, you know, this one gets completed. Now we have the Java setup destination folder and this is the dialog box which is popping up. What you need to do here is to change the location of this particular installation um, to the location of the new file which we have created. Okay, so click on change and locate that file which you have created. So this is a Java file which is created in Windows C drive which I already created uh, by myself. Alright, and click on OK. Now Java will be installed in this location, okay? So click on Next. And now Java is getting installed. Wait for some time until this one gets completed. All right, so our installation is successful. Wow. Now we are going to close this, but still not yet over, folks. We got to check whether we have the file or not. So let me go ahead to go to C drive. And we have the Java. We have these folders. Okay, so Java is successfully installed, but we don't have the JDK folder here, folks. So what you need to do is we need to go to the program files. We have another Java here, right? And here is a JDK file, 1.8. So what you need to do is you need to select this JDK file, right click on it, cut it, okay, and go to this folder which we have created, okay, since there is no JDK file here, just paste it here, okay, click on continue, because it's a C drive, you need to give permission. Now once you have the JDK file here, the other folder on the program files is empty because you have just copied it, uh, cut it from here. So what you need to do is you need to delete this particular file. So shift delete, you have to permanently delete this folder, right? Yes, continue. So now you have the Java file here, okay? Which is successfully installed, the JDK is given here. If you click on it, you have the bin folder for the JDK, right? So this is what you need to give as the system environment variables for Java, okay? So copy this path, okay? And then go to system environment variables and click on environment variables. And then you need to include this path of the Java file here, bin file fo folder, okay? So click on new. Click on the variable name, give it as java underscore home. Alright, now variable value would be the location, which is location of the JDK bin folder. Now, click on OK. Now what do you need to do right now would be to uh, go to the path in under system variables, go to the path, double click on it, and then you need to go to new, and then paste the same path here of the Java JDK bin folder. Click on OK, click on OK, and click on OK. Now we have successfully included the path of our installed Java folder, um, bin folder, 
in our system environment variables. Now, what we can do right now is to check whether Java is installed properly or not. So let me go to CMD and run as administrator and then go to uh, this one, Java hyphen hyphen version. Press enter. It couldn't recognize. It's a fatal error. Program will exit. All right, no problems. So we have a hyphen version. Let's try that one. Yeah, it's working. So we have Java hyphen version. We are able to get the version of the Java file, okay? Which means our Java is installed. Let me check again. Java C, okay? Yes, it's coming. So which means Java has been successfully installed in this computer. So this is how you install Java in your system, all right? So installation of Java is completed right now. So the next step right now would be to install Hadoop, okay? Since we have already installed the Java version and included in our system environment variables, we are able to execute Java. Now, the next step would be to download Hadoop, okay? So how do you download Hadoop? So in order to download Hadoop, you have to head over to the web browser, all right? And, you know, you need to go forward and go to this website, hadoop.apache, all right, dot org slash leases dot HTML. So once you go to this website right here, hadoop.apache, apache.org slash releases dot html you will have the download page what you need to do is you need to download the binary version of Hadoop click on this particular link all right and once you click on it you will be redirected to this particular web page in which you will have the link okay to download click on this link which is given here all right click on it and immediately a .dz file will be opening up, okay? So let me go ahead and save this file. Click on Save. And if you go to the Downloads folder, you will have this particular file, which is getting downloaded. So wait for some time until this download gets completed for Hadoop. So now the Hadoop folder, ha I mean the Hadoop installation file has been successfully downloaded. Now let me head over to the desktop and here I have this file. I need to extract this file in my C drive, okay, because we are going to install all these softwares in our C drive. So in order to do that, this is the downloaded file. Now I have to extract this in my C drive. So let me right click and extract files, click on it. Okay, so you need to have either WinRAR or 7-Zip installed in your laptop in order to extract this particular file because it's already in compressed format. Now you need to extract this, you need a software to extract it, and so you need WinRAR or 7-Zip or any other extraction software in order to extract the contents which are present in this downloaded file. Okay, so let me click on Windows, uh, the C drive, all right? So the C drive is the drive where I'm going to install it, and I'm going to click on OK. And yes, click on yes, and now it's going to get installed in the C drive. All right, so I'm super excited for this Hadoop installation. 
so you have to wait for some time because it's a large file size and so it takes time to extract this particular downloaded file and by the way the version should be 3.3.6 all right, so ensure that this is the version you're downloading. So yes, it has been extracted successfully. Now let me go ahead and go to this PC. Go to the C drive, and you should have a new folder which is created, Hadoop 3.3.6, all right? So this is the um, Hadoop folder in which all these different files have been created. Now what we need to do right now after installing, I mean, after extracting this file, we got this file, what you need to do is you need to make some modifications inside these files, okay? So you got, have to go to etc folder of the Hadoop file and go to click on Hadoop. And in this particular folder, you'll have a list of files. What you need to do is you need to modify certain files here. You need to modify five different files. What are they? Well, you need to modify core-site.xml. This is the first file. You also need to modify hdfs hyphen site.xml. You also need to modify mapred hyphen site.xml. You need to modify yarn hyphen site.xml. And then finally, you also need to modify Hadoop hyphen env, okay, dot cmd. So you need to modify five different files. Now, how do you modify this? Well, in order to modify these particular files, I have created a PDF of the complete steps, all right? So we have successfully completed this step. Now we have uh, to do this step, installing Hadoop. We have installed it. Now we have to modify and change these uh, particular files, okay? So how do we change it? Well, you need to head over to this file, core-site.xml, right-click on it, click on Edit. Uh, this file does not have any associated app. Please install an app. If this message pops up, try to, uh, you know, open this file in, um, let's say, Notepad, okay, or a text editor. So let me open this in a word Notepad, and you need to paste this particular code in uh, place of configuration. So let me go ahead and right-click on it, and Control-C to copy this particular code and then paste it here, okay, in this particular configuration section. Now, once I pasted it, I just, I'm just i just going to close it, all right, save it and close it. Similarly, you need to do this for mapred xml. so this is the uh, folder which is, file which is mapred xml. so you need to go ahead and right-click on it, and then click on edit. Uh, since it's showing the same error, try to open it with Notepad. And in this configuration section, you need to include this particular code. Okay, Control C. Now we have to paste it, so Control V, and then Control S will save it. Okay, then close it. Now you need to go to yarn-site.xml, which is given here, and then right-click on it, click on Open with Notepad, and you know what you need to do is you need to copy this particular uh, command, Control C, and then you need to paste it here in place of configuration. All right. Um, Control S would paste it and then close it. Similarly, what you need to do is you need to go to uh, create a new folder in this Hadoop file. So once you modified these three files, next what you need to do is go to the main Hadoop uh, file, right? So this is the main Hadoop folder, 
okay in which all these different files are there you need to create a new folder here okay right click on it click on new click on folder and this folder is data folder okay so make sure that the name of the folder is data and inside this data folder you need to create two more folders okay uh, which is the first folder is the name node and you know you have to create the second folder which is the data node all right so once you have created these three folders first folder is data inside it you have to create data node and name node folder all are empty folders okay so once you've created it what you need to do is you need to head over to the etc folder and click on Hadoop and then you need to modify another folder which is given here okay which is hdfs site.xml so hdfs site.xml let's right click on it and then open it up with the notepad and then you need to modify the configuration here as well so copy this a particular code all right um and then you need to paste it in place of configuration control s would save it okay and then you need to close it and now what you need to do is you need to uh, modify and change this particular fold file okay so hadoop-env.cmd so in order to modify this particular file uh, you need to right click on it and click on edit and inside it you need to change this particular um, code okay this particular line has to be modified so how do you change this well instead of this particular percentage java um, underscore home percentage you need to give the bin folder of your java file okay so head over to uh, the windows c drive and locate the bin folder of your java jdk 8. Uh, 1.8 so let me go ahead and locate that so this is the bin folder of the copy that path and then paste it here okay and once you have pasted it here like this control s would save it and then close this and once you have closed it uh, now we have to go to the c drive all right so we have the java folder we have the Hadoop folder, click on Hadoop folder, or etc, Hadoop, and we have successfully modified all these five different files, okay? So our job is done, completed, okay? So now you need to include the path of your Hadoop, because we have installed Hadoop, we have modified certain files, now we need to be um, including the path of the Hadoop bin folder. So in the C drive, we have the Hadoop folder, click on it, you have the bin folder click on it and copy the path of this bin folder all right and go to your system environment variables and you need to click on the environment variables and then click on new and the variable name should be hadoop underscore home and the value would be the bin folder okay click on OK and similarly you need to include uh, go to system variables and double click on the path which is shown here double click on it and click on new and include the path paste con control V paste the path of the bin folder for Hadoop right um, not only that folks you have to head over to the Hadoop folder you also have S bin okay so S bin click on S bin and to, uh, copy the path of S bin as well and then include it here okay because we need to include both S bin and as well as S bin for the path and then click on OK click on OK click on OK and now you can come out we have successfully installed Hadoop as well as included Hadoop 
uh, bin folder in our system environment variables. Now let me check if Hadoop is really installed or not. So let me go to command prompt, right click on it, and run as administrator. Yes. So this is the CMD. And let me go ahead and check if Hadoop is installed or not. Let me give Hadoop version. Okay. Press enter. Uh, Java Home is incorrectly set. Please update etc uh, env cmd. Okay. It's not recognized. It's internal operable or batch file. All right. So there's some error going on. So let me check if. Um, the EGC folder is right or wrong. So let me go ahead and click on the EGC file. All right, and I need to update this particular uh, file. So let me go ahead and right click on it. And I've given the path of the Java file all right here. And you know, I've given bin, right? So what do you need to do is instead of slash bin, you just have to give up to 1.8, okay? No need of slash bin, okay? So just give up to 1.8, control S, okay? Now come out of this, and now it should work. So now that we have successfully installed Hadoop in our system, the next step is to test Hadoop, to run and test Hadoop and check if Hadoop is working or not. So in order to do that, we have to head over to the command prompt, so type in the search bar CMD, right click on it, run as administrator, and click on yes. And this is the command prompt, so let's go ahead and search or type for H-A-D-O-O-P hyphen version, all right? Press enter. Now, if you have this as the output, which means that Hadoop has been successfully installed in the system since it's showing up that Hadoop is installed. Let's go ahead and run the first Hadoop command, which is hdfs name node hyphen format. All right, press enter. And if you're seeing something like this, which means that Hadoop has been successfully installed. Now, in this case, you have to press um, letter Y for yes, and then press enter. And if you are getting something like this, folks, which means that Hadoop has been successfully installed, all right? So you should get something like this. The command is quite simple. HDFS name node hyphen format, all right? We check for the version, it's displaying. And we also have checked for this particular name node format, and we have formatted the name node, okay? Shutting down name node at this location. Now, this is how you are installing Hadoop, all right? Uh, you can do any other command that you want, right? So, now let me also teach you with an example how to actually run a Java program in Hadoop, all right? So let me go ahead and go to CMD, okay? Right click on it, run as administrator, yes. Now here, you can check for the Hadoop version, all right? So if the version is loading up, then it's good to go. Now we need to execute this command, hdfs name node, node, hyphen format. Press enter. Press capital Y, enter. And once you have it, let's go ahead and head over to the Hadoop okay, folder. So this is the Hadoop folder, right? And here is where we're going to go to. So let me go ahead and go to CD and, you know, to copy the path of this particular Hadoop uh, folder, right? So control C, copy it, and then control V, and press enter. Now you are inside this Hadoop folder, okay? So once you're inside this Hadoop folder, uh, what you need to do is type in the command Hadoop space fs space hyphen mkdir which is make directory, 
and then first program. So this is the name of the program or name of the folder, right? So so let me go ahead and press enter. So now we have successfully, um, you know, so the thing is here, we are getting some error. Could not locate Hadoop executable when utils.exe. Okay, we also have another error coming up. Could not locate Hadoop executables, which means we need to install this particular bin at utils.exe. All right, we don't have it. We are getting some error. File not found ex exception, right? Um, so how to deal with this? Well, we need to head over to this particular link, all right? Um, I have given this a download link. You can download it, all right? Um, you have to go to this link, folks, and download winutils-master this file, all right? So copy this link or go to this link right now. And you need to download it. So click on download. Uh, save. Okay, it is downloaded. Now, what you need to do is you just have to open it up. Extract to. Click on extract to. And locate. C drive. All right, you need to locate C drive and you need to click on OK. Click on Yes. And now close this. Now you can head over to the other page file, not fun. Oh, it's OK. Now let me go to this PC and go to the C drive, and there you have it. So we have successfully extracted the file here. Now you have a bin folder right here. You need what you need to do is you need to copy this bin folder, all right? And you need to head over to Hadoop and you need to change this bin folder of Hadoop and rename it to bin folder underscore BKP backup, all right? And you need to paste the bin folder of uh, the um, you know. Bin utils. All right, so we have pasted it. This is the bin folder uh, which we got from this particular folder. So this bin folder, we can delete this particular file now. All right, and now inside Hadoop, we have two bin folders. One is the bin backup, which is the original bin folder which came installed. But then this bin folder, we have replaced it. All right, so this is the bin folder. Uh, which we have actually added extra. So once we have done that, folks, okay, close this and then try to go ahead and make a directory and execute this file, this command. File exists, okay? The file already exists, first program. So let me head over to that particular um, file. So this is the Hadoop folder. Click on it. First program already exists now, right? So we have got the first program ready. Now what you need to do is we need to be able to, you know, put any file right into into that system or put any place any executable file into the system. So now that the file already exists, all right. So first program already exists. We have checked it. We have the first program here. So let me click on the first program. And right click on it and you know what I just have to click on new and click on let's say text document all right now what you need to do here you need to be able to give the name of this text document as main all right and then you need to know Java programming language folks in order to execute this uh, because I'm going to write a Java program okay let me go ahead and write like hello world program let me write a program uh, for Java so you I hope you know Java so let me start off with public class main all right and then I have the opening braces and closing braces and inside it 
I'm going to give public static void main string and I'm going to give arguments all right and then opening up the braces and I just have to close it as well right and inside it I'm going to give I'm going to give what I'm going to give the command system dot out dot print ln okay print ln of I'm going to give in double quotes a welcome to Hadoop all right so we'll then go ahead and give this okay so we have the simple um, Java program click uh, you know control s press control s so that you can save this now what you need to do is close this particular program and then you need to rename this and then change the extension extension to dot java okay so if you change the extension of file might become unstable just click on yes all right so this is a java file right now now let's head over to the MK, uh, directory right so mkdir um, and execute this so in order to execute this we need to check if the file is present or not so in order to list all the files in Hadoop we have Hadoop the command Hadoop fs hyphen ls press enter so this will actually show us all the different files okay and directories in um, this particular Hadoop folder, right? So we have the first program, which we have, okay? So, which means we are good to go, okay? And in order to basically run this particular program, we need to head over to first program. So CD, which is the current directory, should be the first program, okay? So let me go to this first program. And once I'm in the first program, I need to um, execute the main dot Java file okay so how do I execute it have the basic Java command Java C and I need to compile it first so main dot Java okay press enter and it's showing some error uh, void main uh, three errors it is showing I, I just missed some semicolon something right so let me head over to this Java file uh, click on edit and I feel like I missed the semicolon. Okay, I, I, I'm adding semicolon, control S, saved it. Now, let me head over to this one and execute this. Uh, two errors. Okay, what was that? Um, void, okay, static spe spelling is wrong, fine. Let me head over to this one, edit it. Again, static spelling is wrong, fine. Then we'll have to save it right now and head over to this one. Let me go ahead and enter. Yes, now the program has been compiled. Let me execute it, Java um, main, okay? And then enter, welcome to Hadoop, right? So we have successfully executed uh, this Java program, right, uh, using Hadoop, which shows that, you know, Hadoop is good to go. And we have successfully accomplished the task of executing a Java program. So now that we have executed a simple Java program with the help of Hadoop in our laptop, you know, we need to scale this up. And we know that Hadoop is a framework for big data, which is used for processing large data sets across clusters of computers, right? So in order to do that, we need a virtual machine. And we need to install uh, a virtual machine to be able to do that, right? We can't have a large amount of data sets in our laptop, and it's important uh, to understand the importance of a virtual machine, and we need a platform to run the virtual machine. So in order to do that, we need to first and foremost install the platform for a virtual machine. So the best platform, which I recommend, is you need to install VMware Workstation right 
So in order to do that, you can head over to this document and, you know, you have to head over to this particular web page. All right. So if you head over to this um, web page, you can download the VMware Workstation 17. All right. You need to download and extract in your C drive. So let me head over to that particular web page right now. Okay. So that everything is good to go. So let me go to www. Um, VMware, okay, VMware.com slash go slash get player hyphen win. All right, press enter. Now, if you head over to that particular link, you will get the setup file, okay, executable file. Just put this setup file in your desktop, click on save, and click on this minimize button. Now, it's going to get downloaded, okay, it's 540 megabytes. So, you need to have a lot of space, folks, in order to basically, you know, run a virtual machine but this is not a virtual machine this is a platform okay or the workstation for uh, running the virtual machine so we need to download that workstation first and then we will be downloading the virtual machine which is in this case we have the cloud era uh, as our virtual machine right so let me go ahead and install this but first let it download Alright, so we have got this downloaded. Um, now, let's go ahead and install this in our C drive. So, run as administrator. And then click on yes. Now it's installing. Preparing VM player for installation. This is the VM workstation player 17 folks So ensure that you're installing this one. You can also install VirtualBox or Sandbox, but I recommend you to uh, You know install so that you can follow along the steps, right? So it's preparing to install so this is the installation wizard, right? It opened up and click on next. Click on uh, check mark this. I accept the terms in license agreement. Click on next. And you know, check mark this as well. Enhanced keyboard driver, right? Uh, this feature requires 10 megabytes on your host drive. Okay, click on next. And then everything is check marked. Click on next. I create a desktop, uh, you know, we have a shortcut as well as menu program folder. Uh, you know, uncheck this startup menu programs folder. Um, you can have, you know, in the desktop and then click on next and click on install. Now you need to wait for some time until this gets installed successfully. So let me wait for the installation to get over. It's gonna take some time, folks. You have to wait patiently. All right, so our installation wizard is complete. Now, click on finish. Don't click on license, but click on finish. You must restart your system for configuration changes made to VMware Player to take effect. Click yes to restart now 
or no if you plan to manually restart later. I'm going to manually restart later, so click on no. Because if you click on yes, all your programs, you know, which you're running, uh, will basically close and you will lose your program. So uh, that's why I'm going to check in my C drive, um, you know, in the program files, whether I have that installed or not. I'm, I've installed Workstation, right, um, 17. So let me check whether I've installed it. VMware Workstation, yes, VMware is there, VMware Player, and I have all the files, okay? So that is uh, a good news that we have successfully installed uh, VMware in our C drive, right? Uh, now, once you've installed VMware, uh, just click on it and open it up to check if it's working or not. Alright, so use VMware for free for non-commercial use because we are not going to have a license key, so let's use this as free. So let me click on continue, click on finish, and this should load, folks. You should see something like this. Uh, if you have something like this, which means that, you know, VMware Workstation 17 has been successfully installed, now you can, you know, minimize this for the sake. Uh, now what you need to do, the next step, folks, is you need to go ahead and download the virtual machine. Okay, we are going to download Cloudera VMware. Okay, so in order to do that, you have to head over to this link. Okay, just copy this link, folks. Uh, or you can copy this link and head over to your um, web browser. So copy the link and paste it here. So are you sure you want to leave YouTube? Yes, go to site. Click on go to site. And you know, you will have the setup loading up, okay? Cloudora Quick Start VM 5.13.0. You just have to click on save in your desktop and then minimize this. You just have to copy this entire link and paste it, all right? folks. Now it's going to take a lot of time, folks, because, you know, if you go to the downloads folder, it's 5.4 gigabytes, all right? So you need to wait for some time until this gets completed, because this is a virtual machine, folks. It's an operating system, and so we need to have this in order to successfully execute our Hadoop program, our MapReduce programs in this particular virtual machine and this virtual machine will help us to do a lot of different tasks as simple as possible uh, because it is uh, based on a Linux operating system. We can specify the amount of RAM, we can specify all the configuration for the operating system and we'll be able to execute our MapReduce programs. So it's important to download this particular operating system and virtual machine which is Cloudera. And I just want to say that Cloudera comes pre-installed with Hadoop, so you don't have to install Hadoop in Cloudera. Uh, so you just have to install this particular uh, software, and then you can use this in our uh, workstation. All right, so the VMware workstation will help us to use this particular operating system. So let me give you a quick recap of what we have done so far. So we have installed, first and foremost, the Java file to JDK 8 version, right? We installed it, and after that, we installed the Hadoop, all right? And then we have installed the VMware player, and now we are installing Cloudera. Which is the last and final step before we actually write our first Hadoop program. So, I feel like this one is going to be exciting, right? And depending on, on your internet connection and the speed of it, this is going to take some time, all right? So, I recommend you to install this Clara Quick Start VM 5.13 from the link which is given in the PDF document, okay? I'll put down the PDF document, uh, I'll give you 
the PDF document. I'll also put down the link, which is given in the description below this video, so that you can go ahead and download it and follow the steps and successfully install um, Java, Hadoop, VMware Player, Workstation, as well as Cloudera in your laptop. So you may have to wait for a long period of time because we have four, I mean, 5.4 gigabytes. And, you know, uh, you just have to wait until uh, this installation, um, you know, this download process takes place. And it all depends on your network connection speed, okay? Try to improve your connection uh, speed. Okay, if you're using, let's say, mobile data, try to switch to Wi-Fi so that you get more, uh, you know, speed for this to download. Otherwise, it's going to uh, take a long time. But otherwise, you know what? It's successful, okay? So if you have successfully downloaded it, so it should be there in our desktop, okay? So since it's there on our desktop, what we need to do right now is to go ahead, right-click on it, extract files, all right? And then you need to extract this particular file in your C drive, folks, all right? Um, so let me go ahead and extract that in my C drive and click on OK. Click on Yes. Now it's going to extract the Cloudera virtual machine. 
in our C drive. All right. So wait until this process gets over, and then we'll run this particular virtual machine in the workstation that we have installed. All right, so it seems like the file has been extracted into the C drive. So let me go ahead and, and go to this PC and click on C uh, drive. And there you have it, Cloudora 8.61 gigabytes of space. All right, so we have a list of files here. Don't bother with these files. All right, so what do you need to go ahead and do right now? is to head over to the workstation which we have. All right, so this is the VMware Workstation 17 player. In that, you need to click on Open a Virtual Machine. Okay, this option. Click on it. And now, you need to locate the C drive and locate Cloudera VM. And you have only one folder, folks. Okay, one file here. Okay, this is a file, .vmx file, Cloudera Quick Start. Uh, make sure that you are selecting this right file, okay? It is .vmx. Click on, you know, select this and press open. And now you have to wait uh, because, you know, you have this particular operating system, um, which is Red Hat Enterprise Linux 664-bit. It should show up something like this, folks, okay? RAM allocated is 4 gigabytes. And the version is Workstation 8.x Virtual Machine. It's powered up right now. What do you need to do is play, click on Play Virtual Machine. All right. Error while powering on. This host supports Intel VTX, but Intel VTX is disabled. Intel VTX might be disabled if it has been disabled and host has not been power on chaining. So the virtualization techno the technology or VTX is disabled. It's not support on the host. Okay, fail to start the virtual machine. So the virtual machine is failed to start, uh, but it will start as uh, you have to enable virtualization technology in your basic input output uh, operating system. So, so what do you need to do is um, you need to basically head over to the BIOS of your laptop and then enable VTX and then you need to, you know, open this virtual machine. All right, so let me go ahead and close this right now and head over to the um, virtualization technology of this particular thing. So in order to do that, uh, you need to head over to the start menu of your uh, laptop, okay, and then keep pressing F9 repeatedly and then go to the basic input output um, or system configuration and then choose VTX and then you need to enable that VTX in order to run uh, this particular virtual machine. So let me do that right now. So now let me teach you how to enable VTX or virtualization technology in your BIOS settings. So what you need to do is you need to go to settings in your computer, all right? So settings type in settings and go to settings and go to update and security right and here we have recovery option click on recovery and then advanced startup option will be given here all right click on restart now because if you don't install or enable VTX it's going to be hard for the virtual machine to run and you know you just have to click on troubleshoot click on advanced options click on ue 
FI firmware settings. Okay, you have to go to this particular settings. Click on it, it, and then click on restart, folks. Now, uh, in the startup menu, you have these options, right? You have to go to the BIOS setup, which is F10. So let me go ahead and press F10 here. And once I press on that, I will have this particular, you know, page showing up. And you have to head over to the right, you know, right key. And then you need to go navigate yourself to this system configuration, all right? You can navigate like this by pressing the left and right arrows. You have to navigate to system configuration and, you know, press the down arrow and you are having virtualization technology disabled. That's the reason why the virtual machine is not running. So you just have to uh, reach here and press enter. And if you press enter, it would be showing this one. You just have to go down and then enable it and then press enter and now it's enabled okay all right so once it's enabled go to exit exit saving changes all right and then press enter exit saving changes yes so now we have successfully enabled vtx folks in our laptop now it should come now let's go ahead and check if we are able to run our virtual machine. So as I showed you, I have successfully installed VTX or virtualization technology in the BIOS settings. And now I'm back in my desktop. Let me go ahead and go and head over to the VMware workstation. So let me, you know, um, click on it and open it up and let it run. So once I have this particular user interface, I'm going to click on open a virtual machine. All right, so click on it. And now I have to um, choose Cloudera Quick Start. Okay, and I'm going to click on open. Now the same user interface is appeared here. And now I have to click on play virtual machine. Now it's coming up, folks. Uh, you know. The virtual machine is coming up. It successfully enabled the VTX, and right now it's loading. Um, I'm super excited to write the first MapReduce program, and this is basically how we are going to run a virtual machine, all right, um, in the workstation, which is VMware workstation. So we are running Cloudera inside VMware workstation, and we will be writing programs. Uh, Java programs, we will be writing those MapReduce programs inside Cloudera, right? And so for doing that, we need to set up all of these installation process in order to successfully write our MapReduce program. And so I hope you got complete information about, uh, you know, how to install Java, Hadoop, the virtual machine, you know, the workstation, and, you know, ultimately reach to this point and in my next video I'll be uh, talking about how to write your first MapReduce program which is the word count program I'll be explaining you step by step how to go about doing this in Cloudera okay we will be now executing all our Hadoop commands in Cloudera so stick around for that video in order to basically run and execute your first MapReduce program, All right? So let's wait until this Cloudera opens up, okay? So I'm super excited and pumped up so that we are good to go and execute all of those important programs, MapReduce programs, which will help us understand all the important concepts of Hadoop as well as MapReduce. So super exciting to go about doing this. I also suggest you to revise all the basic Linux commands because 
that will help you to learn how to faster, okay, and also execute your Java programs as quickly as possible. And so it's important to wait for some time until this, you know, Cloudera opens up. I'm waiting for it to open up. You need to wait in the initial point. Um, you know, when you're first installing a particular software, uh, you need to wait for some time. And so you need to wait until this operating system gets loaded. And I'm waiting for it. It's given CentOS 6.7, all right? So it's still loading, all right? So I'm waiting patiently until Cloudera comes in. And then we'll be able to execute a first MapReduce program. Yes, it's loading up and, you know, the application places system, everything is loading. And yes, we have successfully installed Cloudera and we are able to run it right and we have re you know reach displays you can click on computer um okay and you can go ahead and go through the file system all right close it so you have the internet as well so you have the mozilla firefox opening up and welcome to your Clara quick start vm that's good to go so we are able to um, you know, get started, analyze the data, manage uh, the cluster as well. So this is how the user interface looks like of the cloud era. Okay, you can close it as well. Let me talk about the, you know, system application user interface in general so that you will get a feel of what to expect. So you will be writing a Java program here in Eclipse, all right, Eclipse Luna. Um, and then this one is Eclipse Luna, it comes by default here. When it comes to application, you have accessories, you have system tools, it's a file browsing terminal. You click on terminal, you can execute any, you know, program you want. So let me go ahead and execute Hadoop, hyphen version, press enter, version was not found, okay, hyphen is not needed, and, you know, uh, press enter. And there we have it. This is the version of Hadoop which is running here, all right, in Cloudera. Now you can use another command. Um, you can use command like um, hdfs name node hyphen format and press enter. And so you should get something like this, folks. Okay, this is the same thing which we have already got uh, in our laptop, um, desktop, okay, while well, we are executing Hadoop. Now, you can use any, uh, you know, if you use the command Hadoop file system fs hyphen ls. So that will list all the important files here in the directory. Um, and there's not, no file here. Uh, so that's why it's not displaying it. You can type JPS and you can also type in other commands, right? So you can run all the commands like make dir Hadoop. Uh, let's say I'm moving on to desktop, okay, cd desktop, and inside the desktop, inside the desktop, let me make a directory. So I'm saying Hadoop fs mk hyphen, let me type in hyphen mkdir, and then first program. Okay, and press enter. And there we have it. So, first program has been created, and now let me go ahead and go to uh, the files. Okay, list all the files. 
our directories. There you have it. So we have the first program inside this directory. Uh, so we have successfully created this first program here, right? And that's how you basically make a directory by MKDIR. Uh, so you can also use other commands as well, right? Um, for you know, instance, you can go ahead and go to your Hadoop. Uh, quick start and also you can run other commands all right um, you can try and test it out for yourself it should work all right so let me go ahead and exit it exit and it should exit it so the, in applications you will have system tools and you have the file browser as well as the terminal in the accessories you have archive manager character map uh, get it text editor, VI, improve, we have places, you have all these different folders, right? You can go to computer, you can go to the file system, and you have a list of folders here. And you also have Clutter Home. In Clutter Home, you have desktop documents, download, Eclipse, and so on, all right? So you have desktop, you have all these different files. In documents, you have these files, all right? In, in downloads, you have nothing because you have not downloaded anything. You have Eclipse, uh, all right, you have the Lib, okay, and you can close this. So this is the common user interface. You have the option to use internet here, so you can click on this, um, and you will have access to the internet, and you can go to google.com, okay, I'm just going to google.com, and you'll have google.com, okay. Uh, you can also go to, let's say, courses, dot Christ University dot in and you will have courses page loading up okay this is kind of the internet page or web browser and the default web browser here is Mozilla Firefox and then you also have the option uh, for email reader send email okay you can send an email you can use a terminal if you click on it you have the terminal okay um, you have the Java version here let me check the Java version so Java version here is 1.7 point. This one is a Java version here. So it pre it comes with pre-installed Java as well as the Hadoop version. So you don't have to install Hadoop here. You don't have to install Java here because everything is here. So it's good to go. So that's the reason why you have to use this cloud array. And then you have the player. And if you wanted to, you know, shut down this system. Uh, the best way to go about doing this is to go to player, go to power, go to shutdown guest, okay? And then or if you want to power off the virtual machine and exit, show the virtual machine in safe mode, a safe state for shutdown, abruptly powering off can damage data when possible, shut down your virtual machine when it's with this operating system. You can either shut down or uh, you can keep it um, and suspend it, okay? So let me go ahead and suspend the guest. When it's suspended, it's going to preserve your environment data for later use. Okay, yes, you can do that or no. So let me go ahead and go to power and shut down. Yes, yes, and it should shut down. Okay, stopping data node. Um, you know, it's stopping drone node and, you know, it's shutting down. So let's wait until it's fully shut down. All right, so it has successfully shut down. So this is how, folks, you have to install Hadoop and you have to run the commands in your laptop or computer as well as in the virtual machine. I hope you got to know some information about how to go about installing all of these softwares and how to run uh, these different commands. 
But then in the next video, I will be discussing about how to execute your first Hadoop program or MapReduce program, which is the word count program, which will help you to display uh, how much times each and every word in that particular text file is repeated. All right, so how much times or the frequency of each and every word in uh, the text file, okay, which contains a paragraph of text, and we are going to find out how much, um, you know, times a particular word has repeated uh, or occurred, okay? So that's the word count program I'll be discussing in the next video, but uh, I hope you got to know about all of the installation process for this video. Thank you so much for watching this video, and if you have any questions or doubts, or if you are stuck somewhere, you can leave it down the error message in the description below this video so that I can help you out and resolve this error as quickly as possible. And thank you so much for patiently going through all the steps and executing it. I wish you all the best. Thanks for watching this video.